What is up guys and welcome back to the channel. In this video, we are gonna be using one of the most versatile shots in the game. We're gonna be using the slice, good for offense, defense, transitions, anything that you could think of, there's a way to use the slice for it. So let's get right into it. Before we get into the slice part of the video, we have a big announcement. Starting next week, we are going to have a two times a week upload schedule based on the recommendation of one of the people who follows the channel. They want to see a physical training portion added to the channel. And I had a conversation with them. And the reason why they wanted to do it was they thought matches are coming up. Winter is almost over. USTA leagues and matches are going to be kicking off. And they want to see a section about getting in match shape. And I thought it was a great idea. So starting next week, we're going to have a two times a week upload schedule. The second one being shot in the fitness center on, and being things that you guys can do to get physically ready for the upcoming season. Let's get into the slice video, but I'm super excited to announce that we're going to be doing a two times a week schedule for the next couple of weeks. So when we use a slice, there are going to be a bunch of different scenarios we're going to be in, whether we're in offense, defense, neutral, getting to the net, running backwards, the slice has a bunch of different scenarios that it fits into as opposed to your normal ground strip with a forehand or a backhand. Now, what I'm gonna be doing in this video is just approaching the different technical aspects and the different situations. And in the second video, we're gonna apply the tactics like we always do. So the first one we're gonna get into is just the neutral slice. The neutral slice is just like your neutral forehand or backhand. It doesn't do anything particularly amazing on the other side, but it also doesn't put you into a bad situation. The goal for this one is that the ball goes back over the net at about the same trajectory that your normal forehand does or your normal backhand. So if I'm hitting the ball like that, I want my slice taking about that same trajectory, making sure that it doesn't get me in trouble. Lands pretty deep, same thing on the backhand side. Not doing anything special. That one was actually too low. You want to get that ball about right there. Now, when we do that, the whole technical goal is that we're not really adding a whole bunch of coil to the shot. We don't need that much work. We don't need that much heaviness or acceleration. Again, it's just the same goal as what you would do with your normal ground stroke. It should be a relaxed shot. Usually we'll do this in a change-up scenario, just trying to break the rhythm of the point. So you've been hitting a couple of topspin shots over and over again, and then you switch to a slice on either side just to kind of break up your opponent's comfort because now they have to adjust a little bit differently. Now on the technical aspect, the way that you do this is you set your racket in a continental grip, as you guys all know. But what you're going to do is you're going to focus more on redirecting the pace and taking the racket back pretty level. Since my racket face is already open, I don't have to carve under it and lift it up. My racket face sits at about that 45 degree angle anyway. You just push back through. This should feel very similar to driving a volley. It's just that the ball's off the ground and it's bouncing. So now watch the difference with that technical aspect in mind. My racket is set like this. And that pushes the ball deep and up. You don't see me trying to give it a lot of carve and a lot of action. It's straight through. You don't need a huge coil, even though it's not going to necessarily hurt it. It's just going to be tough to time. And as you can see, it works on both sides. Small motion. Oh, I finally missed one. There we go. So again, not super high, not super low. Pretty horizontal and extending out through the shot. When you do this, make sure you maintain solid grip pressure. A lot of people try to get really wristy and throw the racket into the slice. Don't think so much about spinning the ball because you have the action behind the shot based on it being on an open racket face. People think that when you slice, you have to really get the spin to happen. Just by being at this angle, the ball's going to leave the racket spinning backwards. So let's get into the next one. Now, the next one I'm going to do is going to be the defensive block. Now, I've done that in a couple of other videos when we were talking about dealing with being a defender, but we're going to use it specifically in this scenario. What I want you guys to think about, again, is very similar to volleying. You're under pressure, so you don't have a lot of time to execute massive motions. What you're going to do is keep the racket pretty much in front of you, put it into that quick volleying position, and you're going to have a good amount of extension 
forward and you're going to try to lift that ball up. You can block the ball low, but under pressure, I don't recommend it too often. But what we're looking for is to have a ball that actually gives us enough time to reset the point. So you're going to be focusing more on what you do on the other side of the net. You want to keep the person back or get them to move from side to side. I'm having the camera facing this way so that you guys can see just the extension portion of it. Then I'll flip the angle. But as the ball's coming to me, I'm in that ready position and I don't do any more than this when that ball comes to me. And as I set it, then it's out quickly. So if they hit the ball hard at me, set, and all I have to do is get that motion going. Same thing on the other side. It's only needed to be about that big and then out into the court as if you were going to hit a volley. So looking at it from the back angle, here's what you should expect. The ball gets fired at me. I set my racket quick and I got that action right there. Now I could take that ball and move it out of the court. But as you can see, as I was saying before, it's not a lot of motion going on. And let's say I was on the run. Let's say I'm running this way. I could easily get my racket behind it and still make that same type of play. The problem people have is they try to do, again, these big actions and you're running and trying to do stuff like that. As much as you can see, it's possible. It's very difficult to time on defense. You're better off just getting your racket behind it and keeping that racket nice and firm and stable and pushing it over. And as I showed you before, you can block low and it is effective, but under pressure, you wanna play with high margin shots. Blocking low, if you're super comfortable with it, go for it, but under pressure, I always say, do the thing that's gonna be successful the most and then practice doing the things that are a little more high risk. And as your level increases, you can play closer to the net. Let's get into the offensive slicing now. So with offensive slicing, one of the biggest technical differences is gonna be body weight. The other shots that I've shown you so far haven't really had a lot of transition force into the court. You can execute those pretty much in a static position. You can step into them, but you don't have to. Now, when we start talking about being offensive with the slice, the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is try to be in a closed stance as often as possible. That allows us to shift our weight from the back foot to the front foot on either side. And when you're using the offensive slice, we do have trajectory goals as well. We're trying to keep that ball deeper through the court in most cases, I'll tell you the one that we're not gonna keep it deep on. And then we also need to make sure that ball stays low to guarantee one of two things. One, that it bounces low again and the person has to force the ball up for us, giving us more time to attack a second time. Or that the trajectory of the ball carries it off the court and doesn't sit up for them. When you hit high slices, sometimes, again, if you're playing on a clay court, for example, or it's windy, the longer the ball spends in the air, the more things can happen. But when we hit that slice through the court, that ball has to continue on that trajectory in most cases. So the first thing, as I said, is you want to have your body set in that closed stance that allows you to shift your weight into the court. Then this is where we get into the bigger setups. The bigger setups are going to allow for more acceleration through the court, more acceleration through the ball, and then as a result, you end up with more force. So as you can see here, I'm not really doing a lot with the body yet. I'm just really getting the arm to do most of the work. And then once you add in the body weight, now you've got a ball that's going through the court. And again, I'm gonna change the angle for the camera, but the concept is still the same on both sides of my body. Big setup here, leaning into the court, keeping the ball low. Let's switch that angle now. So keeping my body in position, ball's coming to the middle right now, but we're trying to get that ball to stay through the court, which again would force my opponent to have to pick that up. That ball is actually too high in most cases. That right there, that allows somebody to, to sit up and attack it. And a lot of mistakes that people make when they hit a shot like that is, they don't realize with all that spin, the ball actually slows down. You need that ball penetrating through the court. That way the person has to back away and pick it up for you. And again, that works on both sides. Getting that body down and through the court, the biggest mistake you're gonna make is hitting the ball low, but you don't want that ball sitting for the person. Lean in that person would have to lift that ball up for you. Biggest technical mistake people make is not making the racket travel into the court. There's always that little bit of carve upward and they wonder why their ball sits. As you saw, I hit a couple of those on purpose to show you 
as soon as you think you're going to hit that really aggressive slice and then you end up floating it, it hits the court and slows down. And the problem with that is now the person who was supposed to be backing up and lifting that ball for you, they get to step in and take offensive position. And you sliced it so your ball is technically going to be slower in most cases. The biggest goal you have every time is that that ball stays low and forces the person to have to pick it up. Even if they step in because you didn't hit it super hard, stepping in and having to lift the ball from here is still going to be way more effective because the net is in the way. As soon as that slice starts to sit up, that's when you get yourselves in trouble. So as promised, I'm going to show you the offensive one that does not need what we just worked on with the speed or the depth. And here's how you do it. Our last one that we're going to look at is the angle slice. This is still an offensive shot. We're looking to get the person off the court. And this actually requires you to not hit the ball super hard because you're going to end up hitting through the court, which will shallow up your angle. The way you're going to do this one, which is different than the other slices, is your normal slices are going to be more through getting on the inside or the back of the ball and hitting out into the court. The angle slices, we're going to try to work our racket edge on the outside of the ball just a little bit. Don't try and like carve around it, but you're still trying to hit the ball on the slightly outside. And this ball needs to have more spin than power. The reason the ball head needs to have more spin than power is because power through the court means that your angle is going to be inside the baseline and inside the sideline. When your ball is hit with more spin, you can play closer to the sideline without breaking the baseline. And that means your ball can leave the court. It's like when I told you guys about hitting heavy forehands or backhands. If you want to hit a flat forehand, it has to land deep because that's where the baseline would be. If you hit a flat forehand and try to hit an angle, you're obviously going to hit it wide. You need that ball to dip down in time. So here is how we take the angle and work it into the point play. So the ball's coming at me from here. And my job is literally to just set my racket and find the outside of the ball. And you're going for that type of angle. You're going way on the outside. And as a result, what we do is give it more spin. And as you can see, I'm pulling it out. And I'm doing the pull all the way to the side on purpose. The problem I'm having right now is there's too much force. Same thing here. Too much force. You've got to get the outside of the ball and give it more spin. That way the ball kind of sits through the court. All right, which side is it coming to? Fire, good. Now that's the shot you want. To the outside. Now the person has to move. And if you notice, I'm feeding the ball to the wings. But the reason why I'm feeding the ball to the outside is because you can't really do this shot from the center of the court. Center of the court narrows up your angle. If you try to hit an angle from here, the ball's probably only going to bounce to the doubles line. But once somebody creates enough angle for you, then you're able to hit the outside of the ball, land it near the service line or the blue line, and get it to break to the outside. Remember, set your body and work the outside edge of the racket. Same thing on the forehand side to here, not behind it. If you do this one, you're going to want to push that ball deep, usually like a transition shot or a volley. Transition shots fall into these shots as well. You can use it to really get around and get closer, but also our deep slices and our harder slices will work. And the goal is always to make sure that when you slice, unless you're defending, that you put yourself in a better position. Slicing on defense is going to be about not getting yourself in trouble. Slicing on offense is going to be about getting yourself to an elevated position of control. That's going to wrap up this video, guys. Obviously, I hope it was helpful. If you know somebody that would benefit from it, please send this off to them. Again, I'm super excited to add in the physical training component to these videos, and we will see you guys in the next one.